Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com, and today we are going to be making this. So yeah, a whole lot going on there. All the clips are of course rendered straight from Eevee at blazing fast speed. Like seriously to render this entire animation takes less than five minutes. Uh, if your computer is staring at you in the eyes right now saying don't even think about it, give that fella a little pat on the head tell him it's going to be okay. Now where things get really spicy is when we start syncing the animation with the music and the music is actually where this project started. If you look at a lot of professional advertising work, part of what makes it so slick is the music and how it works with the visuals, and they definitely should work together. I had a buddy of mine, Andrew Olson, who I've worked with on a number of projects, create this little track for me to use. I pretty much told him to do whatever he likes and just give me something with some nice places to sync the animation in. You be the judge, but I think it turned out pretty flippin' sweet. Now I encourage you to go out and find some audio of your own. Just make sure that you're not using anything copyrighted, especially if you plan to do any commercial work using it. That hit song you just heard on the radio is unfortunately going to be off limits. What kind of music do you guys even listen to? Leave a comment below. In our case, this track was custom built for the project and Andrew was so kind to allow you to use it as well. The full 20 second track will be available for download on my Patreon, even if you are not a member. Of course, if you do choose to use it, please give credit to Andrew and of course feel free to tag me as well. Love seeing what you guys do with my tutorials. So let me walk you through how this tutorial is laid out and what we're going to cover. You don't have to follow all the steps, but I wanted to make sure you got to see every little piece that goes into creating an animation like this and uh, it's simpler than you think. I thought this tutorial would be a lot shorter, but uh, it just didn't work out that way, and I thought you guys would appreciate more info than less, so let me know if uh, these hour-long ones are just a little too overwhelming for you. I just want to show you guys cool stuff, and sometimes it takes time to make cool stuff. First, what we're going to do is create the phone model as a modeling exercise, and then I encourage you to put your own spin on it, of course, come up with something unique, or maybe if you're already familiar with modeling, you don't want to show some product besides a phone, you're welcome to do that. What I'm going to teach you today definitely applies to other stuff. so. After all that, we're going to do a quick little detour. I'll show you how I made that little background animation, since I know a few of you were interested in that. And once we've got our phone model all ready for action, we'll get it into a basic scene, do some lighting, set up our first animation, kind of lay down the ground rules for how this is all going to come together. Uh, we will also touch on how to work with an audio track in Blender, how to find some unique places in the track to help inspire and kind of drive your animation. I'm not going to create every animation since it can be a very time consuming process of kind of fine tweaking curves and camera angles. But what I will do instead is show you each scene that you saw in the intro and do a quick breakdown kind of covering the unique elements in each one. So let's go ahead and get started with the modeling. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started modeling that phone. Can't have a phone commercial without a phone. Can't have a Blender file without the default cube. Let's actually use that default cube. I'm going to scale it down to zero, merge vertices by distance, so that we basically just have a plane here. And while that plane is pretty, we're going to make it into more of a phone shape. Some may call that a rectangle. Call it what you will. We're going to add a bevel modifier. And check this only vertices options. And this will allow us to make a uh, just kind of a nice rounded um, rounded edge there. That looks pretty good. We're going to be getting in pretty close uh, with some of our renders, so we'll do 10 segments. Maybe we go wild. Let's do 11. Don't get too crazy, Derek. Tutorial just started. Anyways, let's add in a solidify modifier to give this some thickness. Bump that up something like this. And uh, if you're losing your mind already, or maybe you just need a simplified phone, then you can leave it at this. We basically got our modern phone, which is like a rounded rectangle here. So leave it at that if you like. But what I'm going to do is add another bevel modifier. And if you've seen my tutorials before, you know we need to turn on a limit method so that just gets those edges we want it to get. And now we can adjust this bevel to whatever we like. And this is all stylistic at this point, but this is actually, this is a history lesson here. So once upon a time, Steve Jobs went to Johnny Ive and said, Johnny, the iPhone has been a wild success. How do we make it better? And what Johnny did was he launched Blender, he upped the segments on his bevel modifier, and then he just made it a little bit thinner and maybe made this bevel a little bigger. And the new iPhone was born. Just kidding. I have a lot of respect for product designers, but there's no getting around the fact that phones are 
like rounded rectangles nowadays. So anyways, that looks pretty good. What I need to do to make it look a little more detailed, a little better, and again, you can skip this part if you like, is add in some buttons, some ports, some things of that nature, just to give this, again, a little more spice. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this. Bring it up a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing for a second here. I'm gonna remove this bottom bevel modifier, and then we can shade this flat for now. And what I'm gonna do is actually use this plane object with all the modifiers enabled. We, you can see we just have this nice little kind of object here with these modifiers that we can use to start making some of those ports. So I'm gonna go into edit mode here. Let's just bring this down a little bit. Rotate this on the uh, Y axis. And if you pay very close attention, you'll see what I'm doing here. You don't have to pay that close attention. I'm just gonna kind of make yeah, I'm gonna use this object with those modifiers applied, or not applied, but with those modifiers active to just start kind of cutting into this object a little bit. And we do want that to cut in, so let's uh, let's bring that in a little bit, something like that. You can see in wireframe view how that's going into the object. That's looking pretty good. And now we did actually use this, um, since we duplicated the object, this 11, segment bevel modifier was this edge but for these pieces we don't need quite so much detail so let's let's maybe crank that down to like a like a five or something i think it's going to look fine so with that together like that let's add a few more little parts where that is going to be cut up and we will do maybe over here we'll do kind of like a volume rocker thing let's just kind of move that in there somewhere about there duplicate that volume up volume down maybe over here we've got something like a like a hold button or you know just it's just another detail you don't need to know what it does it just looks good okay maybe we scale it down a little bit on the x-axis that's looking fancy that's looking snazzy maybe over here we'll add in some uh, you know that could be like a little speaker port or something let's duplicate this bring it down and then maybe like scale this on the y-axis a little bit you know again add as, add as much detail as you want don't drive yourself crazy but I'm just gonna do that, maybe duplicate this. And then let's maybe like duplicate again. Something like that. We're not being super accurate here. We're just trying to quickly add some detail so that when we make this uh, little phone commercial we end up with, we'll have some nice details to work with. So let's just get that place to um, you know somewhere nice and somewhere nice and even. Again, we're not using a mirror modifier here or anything, so this isn't completely accurate, but I think that's gonna look pretty good. Now, so people don't go crazy, we better add a phone jack. I'm gonna add that right over here. Not a phone jack, a headphone jack, that's what they call it. And now since we're rounding these with the bevel modifier, this isn't gonna be quite perfect, but let's just get that to sort of a circle shape. I think that's gonna look fine like that. You just gotta have it in there, otherwise people will be mad at you. They'll be like, why didn't you include a headphone jack? Anyways. That looks good like that. It doesn't need to be super duper perfect. Maybe we'll move it over here. That's where I want my headphone jack. Okay, so with that all together, looking pretty good. Now what we need to do is use this object to cut into the phone object. But for us to be able to do that, we will need to apply these modifiers. And since applying those modifiers is gonna be a destructive process, I'm actually gonna press Shift D and duplicate those, and then M to move them to a new collection, which I will call the Trash Collection. You can call that whatever you want. I think Andrew Price did a tutorial where he did a similar thing and called it the Archive Collection, which maybe makes a little more sense, but I don't know, I like to call it Trash. Call it what you will. What we can do now is go into these modifiers and just start applying them. So now if we tab into Edmode, we can see we have full access to all that geometry. So that's looking pretty good. Now maybe what I wanna do while I'm in here is let's just inset this face a little bit. And we're just gonna create a nice little lip here that we can have as kind of the edge of our screen. So let's just extrude that down a little bit. And then over here, we'll turn on this auto smooth option. Normals auto smooth. And that will just tell Blender to keep uh, certain areas sharp. So that's looking pretty good. Now what we can do is go into this object and apply the modifiers. So let's apply each one of them. And then now uh, in edit mode, before I actually do the Boolean operation, the Boolean operation, what I'm gonna do is right click and merge vertices by distance. And that's gonna, it removed quite a bit of vertices there. And 
Sometimes that's because, you know, when the bevel is kind of intersecting itself and create duplicate vertices, don't want those. So that's why we did that. Now what we can do is go into this object again and add a Boolean modifier. Use this little eyedropper to pick it. And uh, yeah, it's working properly. We do have some kind of weird shading here. Um, and that's just because the Boolean will kind of mess, mess up the things. You can kind of move this around a little bit try to get it to look a little nicer. You can see if we've got it on that flat surface, it's going to work a little bit better. But, um, you know, the Boolean is kind of a, sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it is kind of hard to see what it's doing. So it's working properly, but just so you can see it a little better, I'm going to go down here and change this to the uh, bounds method of viewport display. So now you can see that this is, uh, this is working properly. So this is actually what the uh, Boolean is doing. It's just basically cutting into that object. So I want to leave it right where it is. So I'm going to go in now and just apply that Boolean modifier. And then I can delete this again. If we needed to go back and find it again, it would be in this uh, trash collection, which I suppose at that point you could call the pat yourself on the back for making duplicates collection instead of trash because yeah, I don't think that would fit here though. Pat yourself on that. No. Anyways, we need to actually put some buttons in those holes that we created. So we're going to do that by, uh, you could do it a number of ways like anything in Blender, but I'm going to go in here and tab into edit mode and then just select these faces here and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to press I to inset this face just a little bit and then E to extrude it out. Bum, bum, bum. That is the sound buttons made when they are born. Just kidding. Let's uh, let's bevel that just to make it nice and nice and smooth. We're gonna use some shiny materials here, and you know, having those little edges will make this uh, make this catch some light very nicely. Sometimes when you're doing those operations, you need to reshade smooth. So yeah, those are some uh, those are pretty sexy buttons, if you ask me. Maybe down here, I don't think you're gonna see it, but just in case you did, little tiny details. Let's add kind of a little port right there. That looks good. Now over here, let's make this like I said, kind of like a hold button. Let's do the same process, I to inset, and then maybe with this one, let's actually, like, let's say, let's say this is one that can kind of travel back and forth, this switch here. So let's, uh, let's grab that, let's just bring it down here, and then let's do the same process, just extrude that out a little bit, maybe just a little past the edge, control B, give it that same bevel, and we're not working with a modifier here, so this isn't necessarily exactly the same as it is on the other side, but, uh, yeah, we don't need to be perfectly accurate. I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, so now this, you know, this is just like a button that would have, you know, a little bit of travel. It's the traveling button. Uh, actually, it's not going very many places. It's going to go like right there. So not exactly the most exciting trip that that bevel or that that button's going to go on, but enough about that. This is looking really nice again. Uh, well, you know, I'm so vain. I think it looks pretty good. And if you've been following along, I'm telling you right now, your phone is beautiful. Congratulations to you. Let's do a couple more things. I'm going to flip this bad boy over. Yes, this bad boy. And um, and I'm going to add in now kind of like a, like a little camera cluster up here. And the way I'm going to do that is by pressing Shift S with that face selected and snap my cursor there so it's sitting right on top. And now what I'll do is go in and add a circle. And this will just kind of be the, uh, yeah, this will be the start of my little my little camera cluster here. So move this to where you think it goes. For me, I think that's going to look pretty good right about there. And um, now what I'll do is just extrude it inwards, something like that, and then extrude it up, something like that. And uh, yeah, that's looking decent, except that little flickering is driving me freaking crazy as it always does. I'm just going to bevel this so that we've got kind of a nice smooth transition here. Something like that I think looks good. Let's shade it smooth and uh, maybe this outside edge. Let's just bring this down ever so slightly so that we don't have those duplicate faces there. And um, yeah, it blends seamlessly. Just kidding. No, it doesn't. There's this little option called outline, which will show you the kind of outlines of separate objects. Really handy, but uh, in this case, I want to see that that is indeed nice and smooth. Not completely perfect. If you did want it perfect, you'd probably have to actually go into your geometry and, um, you know, make it all proper, but we don't, uh, we're not worried about that today. So don't worry about it today. So now what I want to do, uh, you could just do one camera if you were plain, but we're living in the future here. Oh, we got some kind of weird stuff. Let's just delete this face. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, you know, I want to live in the future as I was saying, 
and we're gonna have a bunch of cameras in here. If we just tried to pull this out though, we're getting some weird stuff going on there. We need to have kind of another straight face. So I'm just gonna add those right here, just adding edge loops so that now when I pull all these faces out on the Y axis and drag this over, it'll be nice and, uh, nice and straight. Oops, it's not, I think I still had some stuff selected. So let's, uh, there we go. Now we're looking good. Straight, straight. Um, maybe move this up just a little more and give ourselves some space and you know do whatever you want here You can make this like ridiculous shaped. You could like put it right there. That's kind of cool. No, don't like it Let's uh, let's let's just leave it at that now What I'll do is just a couple more things here. Let's select this outer ring here um, No, not extrude it. Let's press F to fill it in I to inset it and just give ourselves a nice little lip there and then maybe E to extrude it down just so it's sitting right on top of where our phone was, something like that. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn on our lovely little auto smooth option there. And uh, yeah, now we kind of have the basis for our camera cluster and that is looking good to me. So let's, uh, let's actually go ahead and add some materials. I think that'll be fun. So I'm popping over here into my look dev mode and that's just gonna set us up with kind of an automatic HDRI setup. This is not our actual scene lighting. We're gonna do that in a little bit. But um, yeah, this is gonna help us see those materials. So about those materials, let's go ahead and go in here. Let's rename this default material to um, phone body or something like that. Name it whatever you want. You can name it Dingledorf, I don't care. Let's change the color to, um, yeah, whatever you like. I really do not care, but I'm gonna make mine. I care about what color mine is. I don't care about what color yours is. I'm gonna make mine a nice blue color. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Bring the saturation down a little bit. I want mine to be metallic, actually, just because, you know, I like it. That looks good. Make it rough. Make it shiny. Do whatever you want. It looks, wow, look at that shiny. See those automatic HDRIs really help you see that. See that glimmer and shine. So I'm going to leave mine, yeah, something like that. I think it's going to look fine. Mine is fine all the time. Derek Rhyme Master. Okay, back to the tutorial. Let's, um, let's make the inside of this camera like a black material. So I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to call it black. And of course we will change the color of it to yellow. Just kidding. That's green. And also just be kidding. This is going to be, oh God, what am I doing here? Come on, click black. Got it. Good. Um, and I want that to be right here, a sign. So now the inside of that is nice and black where we will go and put our roughness to one. And yeah, we're gonna put our like lenses and stuff in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna shift S, snap my cursor to selected, which will move it to this little center point where we started that object. And I'm gonna add in a UV sphere. It's gonna start off freaking huge. Let's scale it down in edit mode. And um, yeah, let's just kinda get it to a nice size. Something like that I think looks pretty good. Let's shade it smooth and uh, let's set up the material for that one. So let's just do new material. Let's call that one lens and change the color of it to a uh, sort of a blue color. I think usually looks pretty good for this and don't want it to be too rough. Want it to be nice and shiny and we do want it to be transparent. So let's turn the transmission value all the way up. And then since we're working in EV here, we need to change a couple settings down here in the settings section. These are like all settings and for some reason this section is called settings, which I like. Um, so we're going to turn off the shadow and then for the blend mode, let's turn that to alpha blend Usually looks pretty good. So now what we can do is go into this alpha value right here on our principal shader And just bring that down a little bit. So it's kind of transparent That looks pretty good to me. And now what I'll do is in edit mode. I'm going to duplicate this scale it inwards and this will just give me kind of like a nice two layer like lens effect. I don't know. I looked at some reference images. They looked kind of cool when they had that. So, uh, so we're doing it. Uh, camera people leave your nasty comments somewhere else. So I'm selecting an outside ring there and I'm just going to extrude it out. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Alt Z. Let's bring that up. And, uh, okay. Definitely don't want it that crazy material. So let's add in our black material using that once again, let's assign it. And then we can, uh, we got weird normals. Let's press shift N to recalculate those. And uh, yeah, that's looking cool. So now you just wanna go in and kinda add some more details as you please, just to make this look, make it look like you worked 
a little harder on it. Um, yeah. So so work hard on it. Let's uh, let's turn on our once again lovely auto smooth feature. And I want this to be sharp too. That looks good. Something like that. And then now back in edit mode, I think what I'll do is just actually duplicate this whole thing again. And we'll make another camera because yeah, it's almost 2020. Or I don't know, maybe you'll be watching this tutorial in 2020. Comment below 2020 fam. And then actually every year on January 1st, someone please comment with the new year so that people can like your comment or something. I don't know. Never mind. So uh, I'm going to make this camera maybe a little bit bigger. This is going to be the hyper duper camera, you know, because it's freaking 2020. Okay, that is, <laughs> that's maybe a little too ridiculous even for me. Let's, uh, let's maybe make that a, uh, we just want it to be a little different so that it looks like we, uh, so it looks like we thought about it, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's just add some more detail. Maybe like put it, a little ring there, a hyper duper ring because this is the hyper duper camera. Maybe this comes in a little bit. Nice sharp hyper duper camera. And you know, let's just go crazy. Let's uh let's um let's select let's select this whole thing here and then duplicate it. Maybe scale it down. This is the uh the hyper duper small edition. And what this one does is um it uh it's just hyper duper, okay? Don't worry about it. Let's um let's try to select another camera here. Maybe this one. Except uh oh, we're getting some extra faces there. Let's uh let's select that and then let's select that. I'm pressing L to select these islands here. And then let's duplicate this one. Maybe put that right there. Hyper duper 2.0. This is like you know what it does actually in scientific terms. This advanced camera allows you to if you can't tell I'm making this up as I go but it's like you know maybe maybe yeah you can like scan real world objects and it turns them into blender files wouldn't that be nice we wouldn't have to model this darn phone just kidding I'm having a good time modeling the phone are you leave a comment below um yeah I think we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that we've got our ridiculous uh, camera cluster there looking very fancy looking very cool maybe we want to make it even cooler look at that you can just add details endlessly and people will think you worked on it for hours um maybe we have been working on it for hours i should probably wrap this tutorial up uh yeah that's looking pretty good so let's leave it at that now last thing we want to do is add the glass that goes on top of this so i'm going to select that object and then i'm going to select this ring shift d to duplicate it p to separate it by selection select it make it a face and then um, for that material let's uh we don't want either one of these let's remove those let's start with the lens material just because it already has some of the EV things set up I'm gonna add a new one and we'll just call this glass because we're gonna use it in a couple other places um, well yeah other places where there's glass if that makes any sense so don't want it to be blue let's turn the saturation down value all the way up nice and bright white uh, let's leave it nice and shiny Maybe we can turn the alpha down a little bit so we can see all our hard work on the camera in there. And wow, this look dev mode is really pretty, really pretty. If you don't like the uh, HDRI you got, there's a couple other options there. Oh, that's a nice one. And again, this is not our scene lighting. Uh, you wish it was, but it's not. Um, looks good though. So to add a little more realism, let's extrude this down a little bit just so that we have some uh, actual thickness there. Careful not to intersect our extremely expensive cameras. Uh, we do have some geom double geometry going there, so I'm just going to scale that in a little bit so that we don't get that flicker. We can shade that smooth, and yeah, it should have this auto smooth already enabled since we duplicated it from an object that had auto smooth enabled. Anyways, that looks good. Now, last thing maybe I'll do is another just little detail I saw in some of my reference photography. Let's inset that face, and then um, what we can do now is just select this ring here, and then let's add in our black material again assign it and uh, yeah now we got this kind of little black ring there and we got the thickness the shininess there this is looking very dynamic very cool last thing I want to do at least for now is flip this thing over and let's take a little bit of a look at the screen so if you want to rotate this whole thing around nothing's gonna come with it so let's um, let's just select everything here and then parent it to the phone object object 
keep transform. Oops, not those. We can delete that for now. So yeah, we got all that in there. Looking good. So now if we spin it over, and our, our phone object, by the way, is still named cube, because if you forgot, we made this from the default cube. Default cube, oh, how you've grown. Let's name this phone, because uh, that really tripped me up. Of course we're naming it phone. Is anyone unclear on why we would name this phone? Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Let's select this top face here. And uh, we want that to have the glass material. And I also want this face to have that. So let's add a new material. Let's have it be glass and uh, let's assign it. And now that is working properly. We've got a nice glass there, but of course we can see into our phone and this tutorial, like I said, probably long enough. Don't need to model the entire interior. So let's add in a screen to cover up that interior. And so the way I'm going to do that is just by getting that bottom edge there and pressing F to fill it in. And then let's add a new material. Of course, we'll call that screen. And for that material, let's make it an emission shader, I think. I know. And let's assign it. So now that emission shader is on that bottom part. And now for this, you could load in a picture, picture your mom, picture your cat, or like a video or something. I, of course, made a nice little video, so I'm going to load that in. I think I'll show you in this tutorial how I made that, just a real quick overview. Um, so stay tuned for that part, but let's add in an image texture. And then what I'll do is open it up. I've got it saved right here as background two. And yes, it is working properly. First thing I need to do though is in edit mode with that screen selected, press U and smart UV project. Now that is on there. And like I said, this is actually a video. So if I press space bar though, it's not going to play. So let's First, tell it that it has some frames. So let's just put that at like 100. And uh, for the time being, we can leave that at 100 too. And then let's turn on auto refresh. And now when we press spacebar, that video will actually play. And it is upside down, a little funky. So let's, um, let's drag out a new window here. Oops, if you can click that corner, it's always a little tricky. And make that a UV image editor. Load in our background image. Guys, this is crazy. This is like the video is playing in both places. Our phone is rendering in beautiful detail, real time, and um, and yeah, we can even like edit the UVs while this is playing. If that's not crazy, I don't know what is. I hate to say it, but can your software do that? This is insane. Blender 2.8, Eevee, oh my gosh. Okay, so anyways, that looks good. Uh, I think we're gonna leave it there. I might go in and add maybe like a flash back here and maybe a speaker or like a microphone. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a Dirk tutorial if I didn't slap a big Dirk logo on here. So um, I'll do that now and then catch it in the next part. If you're liking the tutorial so far, please feel free to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, like, leave comments, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, enjoy your phone model if you want to leave it here. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next part where we are going to tie this all together and kind of make a little advertisement for your freshly created phone model. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next part. All right, so just want to take a quick little sidetrack here, show you that background scene file, how I set that up. It's basically all happening in the material here. We've just got a noise texture feeding into displacement, and that's going into this uh, displacement input here. And to get this to work and show up, you need to uh, go into your material settings here and then turn this to displacement and bump, and then that will work. You won't see it in the viewport, but as you can see in a render view, it's working. And uh, to get that nice squished look you're kind of seeing here in the middle, I used a simple deform modifier just to kind of, yeah, just to kind of squish it together. Give me a cool look. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff here, but just play around with it. Come up with something cool. The way I got it to move the way it does is just by animating the location of the, the noise texture. And that just kind of gives you a nice flowing motion there. But that's pretty much it. If you follow me on Instagram, you see that I, uh, initially I was kind of working with some kind of different colors there, but, uh, I ended up not using that. This could just as easily be black and white, but, really do whatever you want. I mean, this is just kind of a, an extra element for your animation. You can just use a photo, but that's what I did. Just wanted to show you how I did it. Let's move into the next part. 
Alrighty, so here we are back in the phone file. As you can see, I've done a couple things just to uh, spice it up a little bit. Hope you did the same. Get your phone looking how you like it. Uh, let me just walk you through some of those changes that I did. So first of all, you'll see that obviously I did uh, had to put the Dirk logo on there, and that's just a really simple material. Following pretty much the same process we did in the box tutorial. If you haven't seen that, uh, I'd almost call it like a prerequisite for this tutorial, but we really covered some um, working with um, the shader here to you know, create some cool effects with the uh, the glossiness happening in different places. Let me just show you that. So yeah, we've just got an image texture feeding into here, and that's uh, adjusting the, the roughness value so that we have that nice little spot gloss. And maybe you didn't catch it in the video, but I did hide a little Dirk.com right there on the camera or something too. So think about that, add whatever you like, make it look cool. Um, beyond that, I did add this little flash object here, and the microphone, those are just, you know, they're just circles and then kind of following the same process we did when we made the cameras. Now the uh, material for that, just a magic texture here is kind of controlling the, um, we've got a little bump going on there and then also some color to give it kind of an iridescent look. And uh, microphone, same thing, pretty much the same exact texture, just with a, a different scale value there. And then we've got that one black. And then beyond that, I, I went in and you can see I added this little bumper material. So just selecting that edge loop, assigning a new material to it, which for that material, same as the phone body, I just turned off the metallic value so that it had a, uh, it's kind of got a rubbery look to it. Also, I, uh, I added the black material to the inside of these buttons just to give them a little more contrast. And then beyond that, I played with the, uh, the shape of this kind of bump out for the camera cluster a little bit just to get it how I liked it, a little bit more smooth. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So anyways, let's go ahead now and move into Kind of setting up our first scene, laying down some ground rules for how we're going to light all these scenes. And uh, there's actually one other thing I did here. So if you look, we've got some kind of unrealistic shading here with those lenses poking through. And what we did to fix that was go down here into the cycles, or sorry, the EV settings. And then I changed it from an alpha blend to alpha hashed. And that ends up looking a little bit more proper. So like in the way that is, let's go ahead now and like I said, set up this scene just a little bit. So I'm going to press shift A add a plane and let's just scale that up a little bit and what I want to do now is just kind of create a nice little seamless backdrop that can serve as sort of a background for our phone. Something like that looks pretty good. Now I'll shade that smooth and then let's actually drag out a new window here. This is how I always like to set up my viewport. My viewport. <clears throat> and this is going to be a 3D viewport as well and we will look through the camera down here in this view. So I'm going to press shift A and add a camera and then Pressing zero on my number pad, I'm going to go into that view, shift tilde, and just kind of fly out to around where I want that camera to be. And then what I'll do is up here in my transforms, I'll just adjust these. I'm holding control and just snapping these to some nice even values so that everything's nice and lined up. And so for this view, let's just leave that as a regular 3D view. And then down here, we'll actually go into the render view. So no longer are we in the look dev mode. And as you can see, it is uh, not nearly as exciting. If you wanted to, you could actually use an HDRI to light your scene, but I like having a lot of control over that. And uh, to get that control, basically want to set up all the lights myself. And it's not too difficult of a process. And you do get some really nice results once you adjust it how you like. So let's go through some of those adjustments. Um, what I'll do is so that I have complete control, I'll turn the world strength down to zero and we can actually turn off the overlays here. And then let's go into the camera view here. Not really gonna be able to see what's going on, but what I'll do first is add a point light. And I like to almost always start with a point light. I kind of put that right up on the edge of the seamless backdrop there. And then I like to crank the strength up quite a bit. And you can see this is doing a couple things for us. So first of all, it's just lighting the scene so we can actually see what's going on. But um, for one, it's giving us this nice background. We've got kind of a gradient going on there. And then it's also acting as kind of a rim light. So when we are kind of rotating this phone around, you can see we catch some nice little highlights on these edges here like that. So that's what that point light is doing. Um, let's also, so we're not getting the, the reflection we're seeing here. Let's add a material to this floor. And I'm just gonna press new. Let's go ahead and call that floor. Call it whatever you like. And uh, I like to turn the specular down, roughness up. We can leave it at this, um, it starts at like a 0 0.906 for some reason, it's like the default. Um, someone please tell me where that comes from, but being the perfectionist I am, I like to set that to 0.9. Don't want it a total white so that we do, you know, we can kind of increase that value a little bit by using this point light. But um, yeah, something that's just like kind of a, 
and almost white looks pretty good. So with that there, what I want to do next is just kind of start setting up the rest of the lighting. But before I do that, so that I'm a little more accurate with where this is going to end up, I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so that I can really see, um, you know, that that's kind of an angle. We're going to be creating the, the first animation that you see in the video, just that one where it's kind of moving from left to right. Really simple animation. It looks nice, but a good place to start when we're talking about how these scenes are set up and how we light them. So first thing I'm noticing here is I'm getting a little bit more perspective than I want. There's just kind of a little distortion there. So I'm going to crank this focal length up to, um, you know, maybe like 82, 80, something like that looks pretty good. And that's just going to give us a little bit more of a, um, it's just going to remove some of that perspective distortion. And maybe we can move this out a little bit. So with that set up looking sort of how it may end up looking once we do the animation, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some area lamps. And I just like to use area lamps because, um, yeah, they work pretty well. And I'm going to use a disc just because I think that ends up looking a little bit more attractive, but use a, uh, use whatever you want. And then let's just start cranking this power up. So now we're just basically going to go through a process of adding lights to the scene and slowly lighting this phone so that we have basically what we want to be doing here is, you know, you want to obviously be able to see the object as best you can. So we need plenty of light in the scene, but we don't want anywhere to be too bright and we don't want anywhere to be too dark. So it's a little dark on this back edge. So let's press shift D to duplicate this lamp. And then I'm just pressing R twice to kind of enter a free rotation mode. And you know, these don't all have to have the same values. Maybe you want, maybe you want this to be a little smaller. So we've got a little sharper reflection there. And like you can, you, you can kind of zoom in here and see that we're just getting now a nice highlight over here. Whereas before when that was turned off, it's just a little dark. You want to avoid things like that. So that's looking nice right there. Basically, you know, a phone is a really good example of a, an object to try to light because if you're working with something like a character or maybe a more complex model, there's a little bit of interest in the model itself. But in the case of a phone, it's, it's so like we talked about in the modeling section, it's so plain. It's just like a rectangle that you really have to um, use the lighting to make it a little more exciting. <laughs> I've used that rhyme a few times before. I think it's going to appear in pretty much every tutorial. So everything's looking pretty good there. I want just a little bit more light up here. Um, this lamp that I just added is giving us a nice highlight on this uh, on this camera cluster. Maybe I want that to be a little bit bigger though, and then maybe not quite so strong. Just I just want to give myself a little bit of a soft light kind of on the front. So something like that I think is looking pretty good. And all in all, I mean, I think this is going to work pretty good for us. We may have to adjust the lighting a little bit more, but before we do that, let's go ahead and get the animation set up. So now is when you would need to decide kind of how long you need this particular animation to be. Um, for me, I know that between the beats, Andrew actually told me that um, the BPM for this song that we're working with, and you may be working with something else, but I know that between each beat that I want to kind of change scenes, I need about 68 frames. And that's done with just a little bit of math, um, depending on your frame rate, which I'm going to go in here and make sure it is set to 30. But yeah, if you need to just kind of look at the peaks in your um, in your audio track, decide kind of where you want the scene to change, do a little math with your frame rate and decide how much you need to render. But really the more easy way to render it would be to just render more than you need. And that's actually what I did at first is I just rendered um, like a lot of frames. I might have done a hundred or maybe even more um, because EV renders so fast that you can just kind of render more than you need. And then when you're editing it all together in your video editor, you can just kind of cut out what you don't need and don't worry about having a little too much extra. But in my case, I know I need exactly 68. So I'm going to set that to 68. And then what I'll do is again, start inserting some keyframes. So I want the phone to start out kind of, I'm going to try to mimic kind of what I had in the uh, intro. So I'm just rotating this a little bit. Maybe it'll kind of start down here and we don't even need to worry that this is intersecting the floor because you're not going to see it. Um, you know, if you're going to be zooming out, obviously you, you wouldn't want that. But for me, I think having it start kind of looking down like that is going to look pretty good. So let's insert keyframes here and here, just right clicking to do that. And normally if I was going to be having to play with the curves a lot, I would not want to insert all those keyframes because it's just, you know, we're not really going to be moving that much on some of these axes, but for what I'm going to do, it's just going to be an, a steady move from one side to the other. It's just going to be a linear animation. So I'm not really worried about having extra keyframes. So with those, with those all set, I'm going to go to the end of the animation here, frame 68, and then I'm just going to move this over, have it rotate and have it kind of start looking into that light a little bit. And this is, you know, kind of up to your artistic expression here. This is something that takes a little bit of practice, kind of how you want to frame these shots. But 
um, adjust it as much as you like. I'm going to go ahead and insert the keyframes there and let's see kind of how that looks. Let's press spacebar to play it. So that's nice. It kind of, it's kind of looking down and then it goes kind of into the light, if you will. That's nice. So one thing I'm noticing though is we've got a little bit of easing. It starts off slow, speeds up, and then slows back down. Like I said, I want that to be linear, so I'm just going to press T down here and set that to linear. So now it's just a nice steady move from one side to the other. It kind of looks like it's been kind of just floating through space. A nice effect if you ask me. So now what I want to do is just go back into my lighting, make any adjustments I need to. I'm just kind of looking here. So maybe, you know, right here, I want this to, uh, I want this to catch a little bit of a reflection. So maybe we kind of move this down here, something like that. So it starts off with a little bit of reflection there. And then when it kind of comes across, you can see we're catching the reflection from this light out here. You know, if you need to move that around, you could move it in, move it out. Um, but I think it looks nice. Maybe I actually do want to bump that size up just a little bit. Maybe move it down, increase the power a little bit. Something like that I think looks good. And then and then it's coming around and looking up into that other light. Maybe don't want it to quite catch quite so much of that light. Let's kind of move that over and maybe give that some extra power so it's really getting really getting blasted there. I said it in the, uh, the last tutorial, I think. Sometimes you guys, when you're lighting your scenes, you leave these values way too low, like you're trying to save power, but you can crank it to whatever value you want. It's not going to cost you any more. So pressing space bar here, previewing that. Honestly, I think that's looking pretty good. The next thing you might want to do is add a little bit of depth of field. I'm going to do that by adding an empty, and that's going to be an object that I can focus on. Uh, use any empty you like, but of course, since I love circles so much, we're going to use the sphere. So there actually is a circle empty, but I don't like that. I like the sphere one. So what I'm going to do is just, um, for one, let's take this camera object. Uh, we can turn on depth of field here. And then so that we can see that it's working, let's just turn our f-stop all the way down. So yeah, nice and blurry. But for the focus, let's have it set to that object right there. And we can actually go in, and if we needed to call this, or we need to select this later, it'd be easier if we named it. So let's name it focus. And now when we move this, so if that is set properly as it is, then we can move this, and that's going to adjust you know where that focus is so I want to just kind of stay focused on the camera here so I'm going to move it to right about there I think looks pretty good insert keyframes on the location and the rotation here is not going to matter but let's go to the end of the animation and then just move that right to its new spot there just kind of nudge it till it's in the in the right location insert keyframes there and then this is going to have that same easing so we can just press T and set that to linear as well so that it moves nicely with it. Now I don't want nearly that much depth of field. I would highly advise you don't use that much. It looks kind of cool for some shots, but a little bit overkill here. So I'm going to bring this back up to a more reasonable reasonable value, maybe like four or so it will look pretty good. And let's press spacebar to play that. And yeah, honestly, that is looking pretty good. Next thing you might want to do is just go into your EV settings here. We can turn on some bloom. Everybody loves that. Don't go too wild with it. Adjust it uh, as much as you need. Maybe turn the threshold up a little bit so you're not getting it everywhere. And then we can also turn on screen space reflections and then soft shadows would be a good idea. Um, play with the settings you like, but um, I think that those look pretty good. I didn't even end up adding the, the light boxes and stuff to get accurate reflections in that animation. And it, it still turned out looking really good if you ask me. So um, don't worry about doing too much there. Just those basic settings usually will have you covered. Um, so the next thing you'd want to do is just go in and make sure your resolution is right. Frame rate is extremely important if you're going to be syncing this with audio. Make sure you're using a consistent frame rate. And then, um, I, you know, if I was going to be rendering this in cycles, I would render it to individual images and then sync those together in a video editor. But in this case, what I did was just use the FFmpeg video and then changed it to a, a QuickTime. And then for quality, do whatever you like. But I found that the perceptually lossless looked pretty good. That gave me a good balance between uh, quality of the video that was output and file size. It was, it was pretty manageable, honestly. And yeah, so I have a 1080 Ti, which is kind of an upper mid-range graphics card these days. Nothing too fancy, but this whole thing for me is rendering in like less than a minute. It's super quick. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to get this right before you render it. If you need to, sometimes it's nice to just kind of render it once, take a look at it, and then if you need to, go back and re-render it because Eevee is just so quick that um, it's easy to do that. So anyways, that's looking pretty good. What we're going to do next is just move into looking at some of these other scenes 
scenes covering some of the unique elements in each one. And, um, and of course, I'll show you the lighting setups for all those so that we don't leave anything off the table. But um, yeah, looking pretty good. Let's, uh, let's carry on. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, well, congratulations on following along so far. What we're going to do now is just walk through all the separate shots that I put together for my animation and talk through kind of what's happening in each of those, go through some of the unique elements, show you the lighting, and uh, yeah, just give you the full picture on kind of what went into each of these and uh, and how it all came together. So now would be the time for you to maybe bust out the sketchbook, think about what you want to do, maybe do your own little research, check out some other product animations, other phone commercials, and uh, yeah, just start kind of thinking about what you might want to do to make this your own. Of course, you're welcome to copy exactly what I'm doing and, uh, and try to mimic those shots. But uh, yeah, you know, this is an opportunity to kind of do whatever you want um, and, and yeah, make it, uh, make it your own. So anyways, let's go ahead and walk through these. Uh, what we have here is the full file that I actually used to render uh, the animation you saw on Instagram or Twitter, wherever you saw it. Thank you for all the love, by the way. Glad you guys liked that one. And, um, and yeah, so this is, we're actually going to put this file up on the Patreon uh, for you to check out if you want to download the entire file and you could basically render exactly what I did from that file or just use it to uh, check out the lighting setups in a little more detail, whatever you want to do. But let's, uh, let's start walking through this. So what we have here is basically the, uh, the scene that we just created. Um, you know, just that kind of basic floating scene and, uh, it turned out looking pretty similar to, I think what we just created. But um, yeah, if there's any discrepancy there, then uh, feel free to check that out. But looking, uh, looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the next one, which was the, I think it was the Pan 1 collection there. So I do have these all as separate collections. So with that, there's its own camera. So I need to press Control and Numpad 0 so that I can uh, be looking into the proper camera for that scene. Now, not a whole lot happening here. Uh, basically, the camera is just kind of moving up a little bit while this phone rotates. You can see it's just moving on the z-axis. Now, there is a little bit of rotation or a little bit of other keyframes here besides just that z-location. And I think what that was was me just trying to keep it um, nicely kind of aligned, centered here in the frame. And you can see I do have a composition guide on here, these thirds kind of overlay. Uh, if you want to turn on something like that, there's actually a bunch of them you can use. Um, you know, all these different options, but just in your camera settings here, go in and uh, you can turn on composition guides in the viewport display section. To see those, you will need to have overlays on um, and you can, you basically need to uncheck everything, but then still have this overlays checked and uh, that composition guide will appear over here in your rendered view. Um, so that's how you get that going. But yeah, animation here is super simple. Lighting setup, as you can see, is basically the same. But uh, the one thing that is happening here that's a little more unique is that this kind of hold button is, um, it kind of snaps up there right on the beat. And um, let me show you how to do that. We actually did that with a shape key. Um, really simple. If you've used shape keys before, this is probably going to be nothing new. But if you haven't, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to remove it just so I can show you how it works. Basically, with a shape key, you are setting kind of different versions of the mesh as it appears in edit mode, sort of. So um, to add a shape key, you're just going to go over here and press this old plus button, and that will create uh, what's called the basis. And this is just you know your mesh kind of as it is. Um, but to set up a shape, you want to press this one more time. And now we kind of have a second version of edit mode, if you will, where we can go in and uh, make some adjustments. So those adjustments we're going to make, let's just select that face. And then I'm going to press control plus to grow my selection. And then I'm just going to press G and Z and then just bring that up to about there, right where I want it. And uh, now when we tab back out of edit mode, you'll see our um, our changes have gone away. But what we have now is this little slider over here for the value and we can just adjust that and that basically becomes our um, our animation there so we can you know go to wherever you want in the animation if you want that to happen on a beat or something um, you know whenever you want it to happen just go in and insert a single keyframe and then you know you can move forward a few frames and then set that to one insert another keyframe and then you can see you have that little button animation and you can do all sorts of stuff with shape keys this is really a very basic example but did want to show you how we set that up so that's pretty much it for this scene let's take the next one take a look at the next one which was the camera scene the hyper duper cameras 
Hope you guys are putting uh, hyper duper cameras in your phone. I definitely want to see what you come up with there. So let's uh, let's snap our camera to view there so we can see how we're looking. Um, so yeah, this is kind of just a really cool effect. I feel like I see this in a lot of commercials. I don't know. I wish I could give credit to whoever came up with this first, but uh, you see it in like everything nowadays. A lot of times with cameras, something just like this, um, but also just in general, you see a lot of kind of exploded view animations. Really cool effect. Um, and yeah, it's cool. So we put it in here. Maybe you want to do the same. Um, for this one, it's it's pretty simple what's going on again, but let me walk you through it and then again let's just take a look at the lighting here we can see i've added a little bit more like i added another lamp in here so that you could uh just get a little more reflection i think that was to get this guy right here yeah so that we had that nice bright there and then it kind of kind of fades out there so that looks really nice and again same process we did when we uh, did that full walkthrough on the first scene um, you know you're just going to kind of set up your animation adjust those lights as you need to and uh, and get it looking right so to do this, I'm actually going to let, um, let's get rid of this actually. Let's just delete the whole darn thing and recreate it so I can show you how that worked. Um, so I'm going to go over here into my trash collection where I have just a regular phone set up. Shift D to duplicate it. Let's move it to that camera collection and then let's hide our uh, trash collection again. So now I just have kind of a duplicate of the phone. So uh, had you not joined all your pieces, you might be able to skip this step. But in my case, I had joined everything together. So what I need to go do now is go in and separate um, some of those parts so that we can animate them individually. So the way I'm going to do that is just press tab to go into edit mode, alt A to make sure everything's deselected. And then I'm just going to press L and that'll select this kind of island here. It's just a, an individual kind of floating piece of the mesh. There's no shared vertices. I'm going to press P and separate it by selection. And then likewise, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to need to go into my x-ray so I can select those inner lenses. I'm just pressing L and, and just grabbing those. So just once you've got them all there, just press P and separate by selection. And now there is a reason why I left this one separate. So let's, uh, let's tab into edit mode and, uh, oops, we were on multiple objects there. So I want to tab in on the phone object, L, L, make sure I got that all together. Okay, and then P, separate by selection. So I have all those separate pieces. And if I were to rotate this, yeah, it would not come with it. So let's go ahead and parent these. Um, I'm gonna Alt-Z to go into my X-ray mode. Make sure that I get all these selected. Select that and then select that. Control P, parent them all to the phone object. And then now when we rotate this back to kind of the uh, the angle we had seen in the animation, something sort of like that. Um, since we since these are all parented the phone object, we don't have any weird orientations. These are all just zeroed out. So now all we need to do is just animate it on the um, I think it's the yeah the Y location. So it would be a good idea since we want these to settle back into right where they are to go to our end frame here. And then maybe uh, insert keyframes. What was it? Yeah, the Y location. Insert keyframe there. Let's select that object. Insert a single keyframe there. And then this object actually poked through a little bit, which is why I left it separate. So I actually gave that a little bit of um, a Z location animation too. So let's insert keyframe for both those in this case. Um, so then maybe at the start of the animation, you have them all just kind of in that exploded view. So let's just give that um, a little bit of Y location there, insert a single keyframe, maybe have this one start around there, insert a single keyframe, and then we can have this one start around here, and then you can see how it kind of passes through. So we want to pull this out to maybe somewhere right there, and then also have it kind of up a little bit, so that when it goes in, it kind of, it kind of settles in nicely. And maybe we need to give that just a little more, or actually I think when we adjust these curves, we won't have the intersection. So about those curves, the basic um, automatic setup is that just Bezier option where it does the speed up, slow down thing that I'm always talking about. But we want those to kind of settle into place nicely. So I'm going to change this. Let's actually, let's make sure we've got all these selected. And then over here, press A to select everything. And then I'm going to press T and change this to quadratic. And that's going to, so this is actually the opposite I want to do. It's going to start off slow and then it's going to snap into place but I want the other way around. So I'm gonna press Control E and have that ease out instead of ease in. And that's looking pretty good. So, you know, maybe on this one, we would have to go in and just adjust that a little more. You could also, I think when we actually modeled it, I didn't have this, but you could go in there and just also just kind of scale that down. 
help yourself out a little bit. And it looks like it didn't help me quite enough, but yeah, you would just want to adjust that, that curve there on the, uh, on the Y location, I think, so that you could get that to, um, you know, if you need to adjust it individually. So yeah, it was the Z location. You just go in here, maybe change that back to Bezier and then right there where it, well, actually that got rid of it. So yeah, you could just leave it at Bezier and that might be actually what I did end up doing. So now it just kind of settles in there. And, it, and you know, I think it adds kind of a nice, another little detail where this is just separate. You could even go in and separate the lenses, more um, different pieces, more action, always gonna be a little more exciting. So yeah, that's pretty much how we set that up. Again, lighting, pretty basic here. Now this one, since we were kind of zoomed in, I probably gave this a little extra depth of field. Yeah, the f-stop there is a little bit lower than the other scenes. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's how we set that one up. Pretty basic. Uh, besides that, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. So let's get rid of that collection. We'll take a look now at the next one, which I believe was the double reveal. And so now this is where we get into talking. You've probably been looking at this thinking, Derek, when are you going to tell me how to add that? So this one, we got into a little more syncing with the audio. Um, let's press control zero to uh, take a look at this. Now for this one, instead of just doing it from frame one to 68 and then just kind of stacking those clips on top of each other, um, since this had a little part that was kind of more synced up with the audio, I wanted to actually animate this at the proper point in the animation. So uh, so for this one, I, um, I had these frames out here. So this one actually kind of pops out. So this one, this one would have ended, I think, yeah, right around frame 271. So 271. And then this one started, um, I think it probably started with some camera movement. So then, yeah, that would have been back here at about 205. So for this one, um, we've got the camera just kind of moving in. And then there's that little part in the song where it goes like, Zoom. let's uh, let's take a look at that. So let me show you too how to how to add in this so that you can actually work with these, with this waveform while you're doing your animation. So let me, uh, let's just press X to delete that strip. And then, you know, this would be kind of what you would start with is not having that extra window. So you would just, you know, drag out a new window here, give yourself some space. And then we would change that top window here to a video sequencer. And then you just go in and press add, and then you would add a sound. Ooh, and what you want to do is maybe move your cursor or the current frame that you're on to frame zero. So when you add it in, it'll add it there. Let's do add and add a sound. And then you just need to go in and uh, add your audio file. And again, if you want to use the actual audio file, I'm going to put that on my Patreon so that you can uh, check it out. And that's actually going to be free for everybody. You don't have to be a patron. But uh, if you do want the full file, that is going to be just for the patrons. So thank you, patrons, for your support. Um, so yeah, we've got the audio file in there. Now to get the waveform displaying, you need to go into view. And then for, let's see, waveform displaying, turn it on. Pretty straightforward. And now you can see it. Uh, if you want to make it zoomed in a little more, you can kind of adjust this uh, this bar over here. And then, yeah, that'll just give you a little more a little more view of it. So back over here, let's, uh, I think when I added this in, it should be unmuted now. Let's press spacebar to play this. Yes, so there was this little part here. So the reason I had the waveform in here and why I did this on this actual part was that I, so that I could go in here and see exactly where that happens. You can see that's where that little peak is, where it makes that kind of nice little sound. And that's where I wanted those phones to kind of split apart. So set the keyframes right there. And, um, and yeah, the rest of this animation is pretty basic. You know, the, the camera is just moving in and then the phones just, um, I'm giving them a little bit of X location animation and then also some rotation. So they kind of, you know, get that nice little spread apart there. And, um, yeah, same thing with the easing here. So I've got, um, if we look at the graph here, this is just going to be that same, um, quadratic easing. So you just press T, you know, you would start off with a, uh, with a Bezier. Bezier, however you say it. And see how that doesn't look as good when it's kind of like, when you've got that, that easing there. Oops, don't want to do that. So uh, so we change that to the quadratic. So we press control E and we, or sorry, we press T and change it to quadratic. And then, and then it's kind of much nicer, kind of snap. And again, this is just a stylistic thing, but you may want to use some of these same techniques in your own animation to, um, to help really sync up with the audio. I think it looks, uh, it looks really good. So lighting here also, very similar, maybe added in a couple more. Um, since this scene is a little more dynamic where we've got kind of things facing one way and then facing another, um, maybe had to add in a couple extra lamps for that reason. 
Um, but besides that, we've just got a little uh, box in here. Um, this is actually the same box I had in the end scene. I just wanted to make sure they matched. Um, but yeah, not gonna really, I'll talk a little bit about how that's modeled, but um, it's just kind of a, a nice element to have in the background there, give us a little bit more interest in the composition. Now, in terms of creating a second color phone, uh, that's pretty straightforward. You're basically just gonna take um, your phone model, Shift D to duplicate it, and um, then what you can do is just go into the materials here, and then, you know, if you wanna make a new material, just do that, and then you can call that, uh, you know, maybe like phone body, um, pink or something, whatever color you want to do. Um, you got the girls edition because girls like pink, right? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so you could go in here then and just adjust the color to something different. And uh, and then you would have um, basically yeah, a new version of your phone. And that snapped back because uh, it got the same keyframes. But that's all you need to do. You could do the same thing for the bumper um, to give that, you know, a different uh, color so that it matched up. And you could do the same process to give these all, you know, their own unique screens or something like that. But um, really simple way to make uh, different colors there. So let's just delete that. Um, and now what we'll do is check out the next scene. And if you guys, I know I'm kind of blasting through these, but um, really we covered the basics of what's going on when we did that first setup where you're basically just, you know, getting the animation how you like it, adjusting the lighting, adjusting the animation, adjusting the lighting, just kind of back and forth until it looks nice. Um, so let's uh, let's get rid of that one. The next scene we took a look at was the dark single, I believe. And this is where we have uh, the dark phone. Let's, uh, the dark, dark phone. Let's uh, move into our camera view here, control zero, and take a look at what that's doing. So this one again is back on, back on that basic where we're just going from frame one to frame 68. And uh, I'm gonna mute the audio here. Um, so that one's just, yeah, it's just kind of fading in there going from left or sorry, right to left. And, uh, and yeah, this is another just thing to think about, you know, maybe you do want to end up adding some text in there. Like I, I didn't even know what I was going to add, but I just knew I wanted some text. So just consider, um, you know, maybe some animations being a little lopsided and not having everything in the center so that you can have some space to put text. And of course the background here was black. So um, if I actually look in my floor material here, so I've just got two RGB nodes. So to add that, you just do shift A, input RGB. And um, I just switched between these. So I just got the two colors there. And that was an easy way for me to kind of alternate between those two. So with that in there, um, that's basically all that's happening here. Uh, all I did was animate the, uh, the Z rotation and the X rotation. And then the X location obviously is, ro is um, changing as well. And then once again, same thing here, just easing into it with that same quadratic. So, you know, T to change that to a quadratic. And you could try some of these other ones if you wanted. You can see the exponential, it moves a little faster. Nice quick flip. But uh, I end up usually just using that quadratic because it's, uh, it's a little more steady. I like it a little more. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this. You know, I could have add, added in all the keyframes here, but sometimes it does look a little smoother if you're only animating on a couple of those values. So, so that's what I'm doing there. Um, so yeah, lighting once again, very similar, just making some adjustments. Anytime you've got the uh, object moving a lot, you might have to uh, do more with the lighting to make sure it's getting everything. You can of course animate the lamps as well, but um, I tend to try to avoid doing that just because you know, a lot of times I'm trying to mimic a real studio setup and uh, and there would not be that much movement in the actual lights. Those would usually be more static. Um, of course, you also don't usually have flown phones floating in midair. So um, maybe that realism is a little pointless, but that's my theory there. Maybe I'm just trying to save myself some time. Anyways, let's take a look at the next scene, which was the float double and a pretty basic scene here as well as you can imagine. Um, there is one thing I would say I would have done differently here though. And um, so these were just indi individually animated. So I inserted all the keyframes for each of these on, um, on the start. And then again on the end, um, just added in all the keyframes there. Um, I think an easier way, you can see these are kind of like, it's almost intersecting a little bit. And they're not like nice and straight. I think what I would have rather done is maybe while they were, um, you know, while the rotation was all even, and I'm pressing Alt-R, by the way. Oh, that's kind of a cool shot. I should have done that. 
somebody do that one. That's a cool one. Um, I would have maybe parented this all to an empty and then rotated the empty. So then to have these kind of slide against each other, I would only have to animate like a couple values. But um, it didn't do that way. Learn from my mistake. Uh, maybe think about using an empty when you've got two phones at kind of a weird angle. It can make the animation a little bit easier. Um, lighting here, basically the same thing. And with the lighting, I'll just talk really briefly. It is, you know, I like to use, again, as little lights as possible. And then also in most scenes, try to use pretty much the same lights because then you start to really develop an understanding for what each light is doing and it becomes a little easier to make uh, the adjustments from one scene to the next when you really, um, you kind of do that. It's that repetition that just kind of helps you um, understand what each light is doing and, and gives you a little more control. And, um, and yeah, okay, so this one, so there's a light down here. So this is same thing I was talking about earlier. Let's see if we can find that light. So yeah, I noticed that in some of the other scenes, I didn't need this, but in this particular scene with this lamp, um, so with that not there, it was just, I noticed, you know, I was kind of breaking my own rules where this was just a little too dark. And um, this was the only scene I think where we actually even saw the bottom. So I wanted to make sure we could show it, um, but just adding a lamp there. So we have a nice highlight on the bottom and there's no completely uh, lost detail on any part of the phone. You can see it's a little dark down here, but we've just got some barely nice highlights there. And, uh, and that helps just kind of show off the entire object. And then same things we did earlier where we've just got the uh, reflections kind of moving nicely across where that logo gets illuminated and you see the reflection in the lens. And uh, yeah, it just looks, uh, looks nice. So that's it for that one. Let's take a look at that last scene, which is probably the most, uh, most dynamic, most interesting thing happening. Uh, and that is this scene I call it color swaps. So let's just take a look at that real quick. This one all happened also on the, um, actually on the frames because there was obviously a lot of audio syncing there. Um, so this one started uh, somewhere over here. I think it, it would have ended at, so the whole animation was 20 seconds and 30 frames per second. So yeah, it ended at frame 600. And uh, this would have started at wherever I first animated that camera. So, that would have been right there around frame 409 where this started. Um, so on this one, let's find that place in the audio track and let's unmute that audio. Let's actually, before we do that, let's just play it so you can see what's happening in the scene. So we've got the camera kind of panning in and out with the beat and then the phone is also uh, rotating and then it all kind of snaps down together at the end. So let's watch it this way. Oh, and we need to actually set the uh, camera here, control number head zero. So you can see again, just pop, 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 and then kind of that final zoom in when that slams down. So let's listen to it with the audio. So let's uh, unmute that. So just a couple things happening there. There's this really interesting kind of part at the end of the song. Yeah, and Andrew put a really nice little kind of ending part there where it's a little different than the rest of the song. And I just thought that would be a good opportunity to maybe kind of tell the story of, you know, different color options. You know, you see that a lot in commercials where they're kind of showing the uh, the variations that are available and kind of the way you can personalize the product. And, uh, and yeah, so I thought that was a good way to do that. Um, and I, <laughs> I, uh, you got to watch this stuff like hundreds and hundreds of times, maybe not hundreds, but uh, you definitely like just, you'll kind of drive yourself mad listening to, especially if you're syncing with audio, uh, as beautiful as the little song Andrew put together is, you, you just watch it over and over and over until um, until you've got your curves all right and making sure it's looking good. But um, as for those curves, same thing happening as with the other ones here. Um, just got that same quadratic animation where it's a, it's just kind of snapping back and forth. So let's, uh, and yeah, the way I would have set that up is just again, moving in here, looking at these little, um, these peaks and stuff to know when that stuff happens and then in animating according to that. So same thing here where this slams down is I think probably right there. So yeah, there's kind of like a little pop right there. So just. And little stuff like that ends up um, when you can when you can sync a lot of stuff to the audio, it ends up really kind of I feel like connecting with the viewer. That's something that's uh, really important to uh, getting a really nice looking kind of final product with something like this. 
Um, so let me talk to you just a little bit how we did the color switch. Um, that is happening in the materials here. So yeah, we've got a, I have a floor changer material, which is, is pretty simple. Just we've got that same RGB value and you can actually keyframe the color. So uh, this is starting off on this orange material. We can see right here, I've got a keyframe. So uh, you can see this outlined yellow, we've got a keyframe there. And then one frame forward, so that happens instantly, it changes to this darker color. And then over here, we've got another keyframe indicating that it's this dark color. And then one forward changes to the white. So that's how the, the floor is changing colors. And I think this box, okay, so I had a, um, I used the same material on the box as I did on the floor. And uh, the logo, so there was, um, a little bit of a logo there. It's kind of hard to see with the uh, with the white, but um, I did actually end up adding a little bit of detail to that box. You can see we've got the dirt.com down there. Um, same techniques we did in the box tutorial. I'm not really going to talk too much about how that's set up, but um, so that that changed as well. I had to make another material there, but for the phone changing, um, basically uh, I could have just animated the color, but with this orange one, I wanted it to be more like a plastic material. So what I did is I got that set up and I could have just animated this metallic value as well, but I got the orange material set up the way I liked it. And then what I did is added a mix shader and that was mixed with um, basically the metal material. And since the, the black metal and the, the lighter color metal, all the settings were the same other than the color. Um, all I did was just keyframe that. Um, but to get the orange, so it started with the orange and I did that with a mix shader. So it's set all the way to one. So it's just getting that orange material and then it, um, and then it snaps to zero. And then that's when we're feeding in from this uh, metallic material, metallic material. And then, uh, it's just keyframed to pop to white right there. And then, uh, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then it settles into this object, which uh, I, I added this little detail here, like that's a little packet that like cords would come in or something. Um, didn't even really end up seeing it. What a bummer. But um, this is basically just, yeah, it's, it's like a simple um, just box material. It's like just, yeah, it's just, uh, there's not a whole lot of detail going on there. And to add in um, all those nice bevels and stuff, basically what I did is just in my bevel modifier, set the limit method to weight. And the first thing I would have set up was this, this largest bevel size to control those uh, outer edges there. Um, just to kind of line up with the phone so that it, you know, kind of seats in there really nicely. And then um, I would have just gone in and adjusted the weights on these other edges. You can see this edge is a, uh, it's like a point, yeah, point 0.2 bevel weight. Um, just to keep that nice and sharp and yeah i just adjusted these in different places so that um, i really had a simple geometry to work with and all the magic's happening over there in my favorite modifier the bevel modifier um, so that's pretty much it Take a look at that. it's popping back and forth and then um yeah this this is up here the whole time just out of view you can't see it and then it slams down there right at the end uh, the dirk logo here could have been done as a texture but i actually just kind of cheated used um, or used I used the images as planes import uh, feature so shift a image images as planes you just import your logo slap it on there do whatever you want um, pretty simple that's that's an add-on you do have to enable it comes with blender though so just uh, search for it and pop it in there but um that about wraps it up folks I uh, hope you enjoyed this walkthrough this isn't the same type of tutorial tutorial. I normally do um, where I kind of do everything ahead of time and then kind of walk you through it after the fact. Let me know what you thought about that. Um, I I thought this was going to be like a short, quick tutorial, but of course it turned into an extremely long one. But um, let me know if you don't mind that it was long or, uh, or if you want to leave nasty comments, tell me about how the next one better be shorter. I really do want to uh, eventually put some like 20 minute tutorials again together, but uh, I really like these um, these more polished ones. I think uh, it's, it's really easy to get carried away with just quick little easy stuff. And I like that, but um, sometimes uh, for your own sake, it is good to take a little more time um, looking at the different parts of a project and uh, and really putting in the time to, to get a nice polished piece. And that's something you can put in your portfolio and uh, and use to get some freelance work. A lot of people ask me, like, do you do Blender for a living? And uh, the answer is yes. I, one of the reasons it took me so long to get the tutorials out, out was because I had a big uh, 
freelance project and um, doing work completely in Blender and uh, making a living using Blender. So hopefully from this tutorial and some of my other tutorials, you guys can get some knowledge. And uh, of course, there's a lot of other good tutorials out there. So just keep practicing. Don't get too frustrated. Uh, Blender is a really amazing software. You definitely can make a living doing it. Um, as you can see, you can make some uh, really cool, really cool stuff with it. So thank you guys for watching. If you want this full tutorial file, or sorry, the full file here, um, I'll have it on my Patreon and you can check that out. And then the audio file we're also going to have available um, even if you're not a patron, but you'll be able to download it on the Patreon um, so that you can use that in your own projects. But thanks for watching. Please feel free to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Again, this is kind of a, a different format for me, but if you liked it, let me know. Um, would love to would love to hear from you. And please be sure to tag me on Instagram with whatever you come up with. Uh, I'd love to see it. Love to see all your uh, hyper duper cameras. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.